You're going to kill me, Judge, but in our break, I didn't step out to confirm that she's here. Can you give me two seconds? Sure. You have a right to have a break, too? Well, I just didn't think about it. Okay. Just in James Nance, Your Honor. He wasn't sworn yesterday. He was not there. Okay. Raise your right hand for me, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in these proceedings? Shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you not. I do. Please be seated. For the record, sir, I do need your name. I need you to spell your last name for us. James Daniel Nance, N A N C E. Thank you, Judge. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, could you please introduce yourself to the members of the jury? Tell them your name and how you're employed. Uh, my name is James Daniel Nance. I'm a detention lieutenant with the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. And, uh, Lieutenant Nance, how long uh, have you been employed by the El Paso County Sheriff's Office? Since 1991, 27 years. And currently, Lieutenant Nance, uh, what are some of your duties and responsibilities as one of the lieutenants at, here at the jail? I currently assign at the detention facility at the downtown. I am the operations lieutenant. The operations lieutenant. Yes, sir. And, and what are some of your responsibilities as the operations lieutenant? Uh, we take care of all the ancillary uh, responsibilities, uh, such as laundry, mail, um, law library, um, so, uh, recreation, um, gang, gang intelligence, uh, things of that nature. Okay. So running the day-to-day -day of the jail, is that yes, fair? Sir. And back in April, or back in the summer of 1993, uh, were you also here at the jail? Yes. And what was, uh, what were your duties or what was your role back in 1993, maybe in the I, I summer? I was a uh, corporal. Uh, I work both the housing areas and the uh, inmate processing unit. Okay. And uh, Lieutenant Nance, do you have access as, as part of your current job responsibilities to uh, jail records? Yes, sir. And uh, are you familiar with, with the, the, the system, the, the record system there at the jail? Yes, sir. I, I'm responsible for the jail management system. Okay. And at some point, sir, uh, well, are, are you familiar with uh, the jailing records for the defendant, Daniel Villegas, from 1993? Yes, sir. Okay. And if I showed them to you, would you recognize them? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm showing opposing counsel what's been marked as states 42 and 42A. So, Lieutenant Nance, I'm showing you 42 and 42A. Do you recognize these records? Yes, sir. And are these records made and kept in the regular course of business of the El Paso County uh, Jail, the detention facility? Yes, sir. And are they made at or near the time uh, of the events that, that are logged in? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, state we're off of 42 and 42A. No objection. This is 42 and 42A are getting into evidence. And so, Lieutenant Nance, I'm showing you states 42A. And I guess this is uh, what's titled Inmate Cell Change History Screen. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And can you tell us, looking at this record, uh, what date? Uh, Daniel Villegas was brought to the El Paso County Jail from the Juvenile Detention Center. Uh, 6-12-93. Okay. And uh, he was in the El Paso County Jail until what day? 9-20-93. Okay. And we see that up here? Yes. Okay. And the time that he was here, or that he was in the downtown jail, uh, could you see what cell he was assigned to? He was assigned to the second floor. Okay. The second floor. 
Yes, right. Where were uh, certified juveniles, juveniles that were certified uh, as adults, where were they kept or detained in the El Paso County Jail? On the second floor, uh, back what we refer to as the 72 hour holdover. Okay. And I want to show you. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that answer. What was the response? Can you repeat your answer? Yes, Your Honor. On uh, the second floor, back on what we refer to as the 72 hour holdover. The 72 hour holdover. Which is going to be on the east, south side of the second floor. Okay. And I'm showing opposing counsel, it's been marked as states 44. States 44. Yes. Uh, what are we looking at here? Uh, this is the um, I believe the blueprint on the second floor of the facility. It is the second floor of the facility. Okay. One of the the original blueprint. Yes. Okay. Uh, and this is what the second floor looked like back in 1993. Yes. Sir. All right, Your Honor. At this time, state would offer 44 and 10. May I look at that exhibit one more time, Judge? Yes, sir. I have no objection, Your Honor. And so, Lieutenant Nance, I'm showing you states 44. Uh, you described an area that you called the 72 hour holdover area. Uh, could you indicate uh, what cells or where that would be here on this map? There's a, a laser pointer right in front of you. Right there on the oh, ledge? This, sir? Yeah, and if you could just show us here on the screen. All this area right all this area right here. These cells down From here, here to here. Okay. And what are these cells are, are these cells up here? These are cells that can housing. These are cells that'll have like a bunk and uh, uh, they'll have showers in them. These are holding cells. Uh, they do have a toilet, but they have no bunks, so we wouldn't house inmates in these cells up here. People are not housed in these cells up here? No, sir. They're temporary holding cells. Okay. For what? Uh, for um, This side here would be people being brought into the facility. These ones over here for people who are getting ready to go upstairs to be classified into housing and being released. So this is for intake? Yes, sir. And these are people getting classified to other floors in the gym or being released or being released yes. okay and lieutenant nance if i showed you uh some pictures of these cells down here of the 72 hour holdover would you recognize them yes sir okay. <coughs> your honor may the record reflect i'm showing opposing counsel 45 through 47. no 49, sorry. The <coughs> state ads from Hannah, you say it's 45 through 49. <coughs> and uh, my question is, Lieutenant Nance, do these photographs uh, accurately depict one of these little rows here, one of these cell blocks uh, that's depicted uh, on the overhead. Yes, sir. Okay. And that's how it was in 1993? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, state would offer 45 through 49. Your Honor, may I take the witness on what regarding these photos? Yes, sir. Do you want to do it now or do you want, I, I can withhold my ruling until you cross examine them or do you want to do it now? Uh, you want to withhold the ruling this time, Your Honor? I'll withhold uh, their admission until cross examination. Well, I, I would like to use them for the direct examination to, to go through them. Let's take them on a word on. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon, Lieutenant Nance. Yes, sir. I just, I did take the these pictures from you, and I'm sorry, I want to give them back to you. Uh, may I approach the witness, Judge? Yes, sir. Uh, Lieutenant Nance, can you, the question that was posed to you was that those photos depict one of the cell blocks. Can you tell us which cell block those photos reflect? It's going to be one of the ones either at the very end, because uh, if you see them when you look at all the cells are on the left, so it's going to be... So, uh, so me, if you can with your laser point, it would yeah. be excellent. It will be one like this one here, or this one here, or this one here. Okay. Um, <coughs> then, subject to that clarification, Judge, I have no objection to those uh, exhibits. So it's exhibits 45 through 49, or Lieutenant Nance, before we get to the photos, I do want to clarify something because our record here on States 42 uh, shows that Mr. Viegas was in cell uh, 276, that appears for, for the entire duration of his stay there. Looking at States 44, where is, if you know, Where is cell 276 on this map? Uh, 276 is actually a holding cell. It would have been over here. Okay. Would Mr. Viegas have been kept in a holding cell for three months? No, sir. Okay. Why would the record indicate that? Uh, there's several explanations. Uh, one of them would be the way it was transferred over from Sieges, which we were using at the time, to Gems, and then over to Odyssey, which is our current system. Uh, but most likely it was at the time we were overcrowded. We had uh, in excess of 1,800 inmates in the facility built uh, to maintain for uh, just over 1,000 inmates. Back in 1993, there were 1,800 inmates in the jail? Sometimes downtown. more. It wasn't unusual for the jail to close uh, to nonviolent offenses because the jail was so full. Okay. And the jail, the downtown jail, is designed to accommodate how many people? Uh, 1,010. How certain are you then? that Mr. Viegas was kept in these 72-hour holdover cells? He had to have been kept in the cell because the cells up front were all for people, like I said, these ones over here, for everyone coming in. There's no way he could have been housed up there. Okay. And it's also against the uh, rules for Texas Commission on Jail Standards for him to be in such a holding cell. So there's no way he could be kept up in those holding cells. Okay. I want to direct your attention here down to the 72-hour holdover cells. I guess we'll take this one, the one here at the end. I'm showing you states 45. <coughs> what are we looking at here? You're looking from the entrance, looking into, there's a vestibule area on this area right here, the bars. This is where the officer walks in so the outer door can be closed and the inner door can be opened. Okay. And then you have the individual cells along the, the uh, left hand side. All right. And so showing you now states 46, uh, what are we looking at here? That's once you step into the past the festival, looking at it the same way. And how many little cells are there in each of these little blocks? There's four. How are people kept inside the cells? Are they kept here? Or, or how does that work? It all depends. Um, once again, like I said, because we were so crowded, uh, normally if the inmates were just in there to spend the night, they would be in individual cells, but they were allowed to come out into the day room. And uh, you say the day room? The common area, this area right here. Okay. They wouldn't be kept inside those individual cells. But there were times when we were moving uh, inmates around for court uh, or others, so we may, uh, we'd lock the inmates inside the cells okay. and put other inmates in the common area. You would put, you would lock people up in the cells, and then more people in the day room. Yes. Okay. And showing you states forty-seven. Uh, 
are these doors entirely solid? Uh, no, sir. Uh, they're vented from the bottom. Can you show us? Right there. It's open right now, but when the doors close, you can see through here. Okay. And showing uh, states 48. You see the same venting? Yes, sir, right here. And states 49. What are we looking at here? That would be looking inside the cell to the outside. This is the entrance from the hallway. This is the vestibule area right here. The shower is back over this corner. Okay. Uh, on states 48, you see the shower where it would be? It's kind of hard to see, but it would be right there. Okay. You can see the toilet and that's the shower back there. How would uh, recreation work, or how does recreation work here at the El Paso, at the downtown jail? It hasn't changed much over the years. Uh, the way it's been done is a whole floor will be taken up, so the second floor would go up together, the third floor would go up together, okay. so on and so forth. The, the inmates who wanted to participate. Okay, and where is the the rec area at the downtown jail? It's on the 12th floor at the very top. At the very top. Yes, sir. Does it have a nickname? Sun Porch. The Sun Porch. And if I showed you pictures of the Sun Porch, would you recognize them? Yes, sir. I'm showing uh, states 50 and 51 to opposing counsel. Lieutenant Nance, I'm showing 50 and 51. Yes, sir. Uh, does that fairly and accurately depict uh, the recreation or one of the recreation areas uh, here at the downtown gym? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, did it look the same in 1993? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, State would offer uh, 50 and 51. No objection. States is in 50 and 51 are admitted to this. Showing uh, states 50, Lieutenant Nance. Uh, what are we looking at here? This here is the, the sun porch uh, up on the 12th floor, uh, okay. the recreation areas. You have the common area here where the basketball courts is, and then you have a fenced in area here. Okay. And showing you, directing your attention here to this column and that basketball hoop. Uh, showing you seats 51. You see the same area? Yes, sir. Okay. Lieutenant Nance, back in 1993, uh, would certified juveniles and adults uh, be taken uh, to recreation at the same time? Yes, sir. They would have been. They would have been kept inside. Anybody who's separated from population for any reason including the, the Jew, I would have been separated in here, so he wouldn't have direct access, and then the adults would be put out here. Okay. Was there, would it ever be possible for a certified juvenile uh, to have contact with an adult inmate in the gym? Uh, direct contact, uh, it, it would be really unusual. There's just gonna be a door, or like here, where the fence is in between them. Okay. Would, I'm showing you state's exhibit number 46. Would certified juveniles and adults ever be kept, you know, in these cells together? Not inside the individual cells, um, but if we needed the space if we were moving inmates around, um, it would be, it would, what would happen is we put the inmates who are normally in there separated out of population, put them into the individual cells, and put the other inmates in the common area. So you, for instance, you could put juveniles in here and you would keep adults out here? Temporarily, yes. Or vice versa? Yes. Okay. 
And to be clear, um, Lieutenant Nance, anyone on the second floor, anyone being housed on the second floor, they would go to wreck at the same time? Yes, we took them all by floors. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Nance, have you had an opportunity to review the jailing records for an individual by the name of Ani Kirk? Yes, sir. And if I showed you those records, would you recognize them? Yes, sir. Okay. Showing opposing counsel what I've marked as 43 and 43A. I'm handing you 43 and 43A. Okay. Do you recognize these records? Yes, sir. Uh, are they uh, accurate records or are they records rather made and kept by the El Paso County Sheriff's Office uh, in the regular course of business? Yes, sir. And are they made at or near the time of, of the events law? Yes, sir. Okay, Your Honor, at this time, State would offer 43 and 43A. No objection. State's exhibits 43 and 43A are admitted in tokens. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Nance, have you had an opportunity to review of Ani Isaac Kirk, is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, in this particular jailing, can you see what date he was booked in on? He was booked in on July 26. Okay. Of 1993? Yes. Okay. And he was released when? September 29th of 93. I want to direct your attention to uh, the jailing records starting after July 1993. Well, I guess on July 27th, 1993, he was in what cell or was assigned or to what? He was cell? on the 10th floor in 1090. 1090 would be on the 10th floor? Yes. And so is it fair to say that 779 would be on the seventh floor. That'd be so. Lock 770 on the seventh floor, yes, sir. Okay. And it looks uh, throughout, I guess, August and early September, <coughs> he's moved around a few different floors. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Was he ever placed on the second floor, or housed on the second floor? Uh, September 14th he was, 93. Okay. It, it says that he's assigned to cell 265, is that correct? Is that what the record reflects? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm showing states 44. Where is cell 265? Right there. Okay. That's also a holding cell. Okay. Are people kept there overnight? No, sir. Okay. Would someone actually be kept in that cell? No, sir. Okay. In fact, uh, that cell is used for uh, female inmates and has been since I've been working there. Female inmates? Yes. Okay. How sure are you that on September 14th he was placed on the second floor? I'm positive. That's what that is. It just means he's on the second floor. And on the last page, it appears on September 20th, 1993. What does this indicate to you? That uh, it was also kept on the second floor. Second floor? Yes. The only place on the second floor we told him makes his back that 72 hour holdover. Okay, so showing you them. states 44. Uh, if you kept someone on the second floor 
uh, for an extended period of time, several days a week, where would you keep them? This area here. And they may move around depending on need because uh, such as this one here, that's used to shower enemies that are coming in. But okay. sometimes we'd have to use it for housing because we'd get you know, full up and didn't have any place. So then we'd have to move people around. Okay. Thank you, Lieutenant Nance. I pass the witness. Mr. Josh Spencer. Lieutenant Nance, uh, State's Exhibit Number Forty Two. Can you see that? Forty Exhibit Forty Two. Do you see the um, the document, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. So on State's Exhibit Forty Two, um, there is no doubt in your mind that Daniel Villegas was housed uh, on the second floor for approximately ninety nine days, and he was not moved from the second floor based on this record. Is that fair? He, was, he may have been moved, but he wasn't housed anywhere else. He was not housed anywhere else. Yes. Right. And I want to show you, what I'm going to mark as a defendant's exhibit. This to my number. Defendant's exhibit number seven that I'm going to show to the state first. And I'm also going to mark. Defense Exhibit 7A, showing to the state first. Mayor Brooks, witness judge. Yes, you may. Good I'm going to show you defense exhibit 7 and 7A. I want you to take a look at that for me. And tell me if you recognize those documents. Yes, sir. Uh, and those documents depict the second floor of the downtown jail? Yes, sir. Um, and uh, it's basically another version of what we've we seen earlier of the second floor? Yes, sir. And those fairly inaccurately depict the, the second floor floor plan? Um, as you are familiar with it? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Honor, I move to introduce Defendant's Exhibits 7 and 7A. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. 
This is in the seven and seven and a half. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So I'm going to first show you Defense Exhibit 7A, Lieutenant, and Lieutenant, it's a little bit cleaner version of what we just saw earlier, and so would you agree with me? Yes, sir. All right, and, um, and does this exhibit, I notice over here on the left side where I'm pointed with the laser, uh, are you familiar with that side uh, indicating showers? Yes, sir. Uh, now, the second floor now is not like that, correct? I'm not sure it's in the other diagram you showed me. Right, but right now these showers are not there, correct? No. Um, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, was this, were these showers here um, back in 1993? Back in 1993, yes. They were there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to go to defense exhibit number seven, which is an updated version of the floor plan, is that fair? Yes. And and we see on that left side the showers aren't there, correct? Correct. And with this Exhibit 7, Defense Exhibit 7, uh, is this a, a more accurate depiction of where the floor is right now? Yes. Okay. Now I want to draw your attention to what you call the 72-hour holdover, okay? You see that? Yes, sir. And then you see on this Exhibit 7, you see the cell box you mentioned earlier, the, cell, the holdover cells, 72-hour holdover cells, and you see letters. Yeah, they, go, um, they go L to Q, skipping uh, O. Exactly. So I'm going to go one, one by one, starting on where I'm pointing. What side am I pointing on Defense Exhibit number 7? North, south, east, or west? This is going to be south, east. Okay. South. That's east, east, south, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and this cell block letter is what? L. This is L. K, excuse me. K. This is K, right. Yeah. The next one over is L, correct? L. And then the next one you have M, M, N, N P, Q. P, and Q. Excellent. And now, in 1993, these letters on this 72 hour cell, uh, this holdover area, never changed, right? Since 93 to the present, those letters have always been the same, fair? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, and to be accurate, this, you had talked about these holdover cells up on, um, I guess, the north side, right? Yes. And these numbers on, these, on the north side, if you look at me on Exhibit 7, uh, I'm pointing at 275, 276, 277, and 278, right? Yes. Uh, and that's the way they are now, correct? Yes. And those numbers were not the same as they are back in 1993, right? No. They have changed, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, but again, the letter cell blocks have not changed in 25 years. No, sir. Correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and I want to be able to um, describe a little bit the, the entrance to these cells. So this entrance here to cell block K and cell block L, those entrances to those cell blocks are right next to each other, correct? Yes. And there's essentially one wall separating K and L, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And then you have to travel some 14 or a few feet uh, before you get to the next entrance of cell block M and N, correct? Yes. And between M and N, there's only one wall separating those two cell blocks, correct? Yes, sir. And then traveling even further down to the last two cell blocks, again, you see cell block P and Q separated by one wall, correct? Yes. Well, in between the other ones, there's a plumbing shaft. So there's a plumbing shaft on the end here. The wider, let me show. Can you please show me what yeah. you're referring to? This is a plumbing shaft, that's a plumbing shaft, that's a plumbing shaft, and that's a plumbing shaft. Okay, you went pretty fast, and I'm no, not sorry. sure what you were pointing at. All right, there, this is what you were saying, there's a wall between here and here. Correct. And between here and here, there's a plumbing shaft. That's where all your pipes are for the toilets and the showers and so on, the sinks and so on and so forth. Okay. So then a wall, then a plumbing shaft, then a wall, and then a plumbing shaft. And, and, I'll, and between, I'm pointing at cell block L and cell block M. You see that? Yes. And 
what I'm going to refer to as the space between what you call the plumbing shaft, that is also a solid wall for purposes of those individual cells between M and L, correct? It's a solid wall with vents. Okay. There are vents in these little air cells? Vents. Mm -hmm. There are air vents? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and the air vents are located where on the wall? Up above uh, where the sink and toilet would be at, up above there. Okay. And is there, can there be communication between inmates between, for example, cell block L and M through that air vent? Through the air vent and actually through the toilet. And through the toilet? Yes. Okay. And that would only apply to uh, and that would only apply to to um, the cell blocks that are back to back. Back to back. Yes, sir. That would not apply between cell blocks, for example, K and L. No. Is that that's correct? That's correct. Now there is an intercom, where I'm more or less where I'm indicating on the with the laser pointer, uh, in that cell block between L. And K, you see that? You see where I'm pointing? There's going to be an inter intercom in each one of the cells. Yes. And then one out in the common area. Okay. And it's usually up towards the front. The intercom is usually up in this area right up there. And okay. then there's one in each one of these cells. <coughs> I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 48. Now that's an example of an intercom in the cell, right? Inside the cell, yes sir. Now can that intercom communicate with other inmates that are on the other side of the wall? No sir. Okay. If an inmate was communicating on that intercom, is it possible that the, that the inmate on the other side of that wall can hear that communication? Only through the vents. If there are vents, it's possible through yelling or something like that. But normally, no. It just goes up to the front where the officer's at. And you made a point about yelling. Essentially, because those vents, where they're located, and because this is a jail... Uh, hard you... surfaces, yeah. It echoes. The hard surfaces, it echoes. Okay. There has to be yelling for, for there to be communication, right? But someone's going to have to talk kind of loud, yes. Pretty loud, right? Uh, loud enough to go through a wall, through a tiny vent on the other side, and whoever else is on the other side they could be hearing, right? Unless they're both at the vent. Okay. Uh, what is, do you know what the dimension is from the floor to the roof? Oh no. It's over, I want to say over 10 feet. Over 10 feet? It's going to be somewhere between 8 and 10 feet, I think, I'm guessing. Okay. I'm going to mark a couple more exhibits. Uh, I'm going to mark these defendants exhibit uh, 8 and 8A. I'm going to show the state first. And uh, on, on this wall, could it even be like up to 15 feet? Mm, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not That's sure. Okay. May I approach the witness, Judge? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> defendant, I want to show you defendant's exhibits 8 and 8A. Do you see those exhibits, sir? Can you look at them, please? Yes, sir. Uh, are you familiar with those images? These are. This is the hallway outside of this area here. This is the hallway, the run that goes along these doors. Through that 72 hour holding area? Yes, sir. Uh, and do those images fairly accurately depict um, the cell block as they appeared back in 1993? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I move to introduce 8 and 8A. Okay. Defense exhibits 8 and 8A are admitted to us. Show you Defense exhibit 8. And as we were talking earlier, we noticed the, en the entrance to cell block M and N, how they're connected, 
and then there's space before you get to another set of doors, right? With the plumbing shaft in between, you can see the door there. This is the plumbing shaft door? Yes, sir. Okay. And then 8A is the opposite angle where you see cell block Q and P, right? Yes. Okay. And these are the ones that are... Um, and, this, and this wall that separates P and Q, I want to talk about a little bit, okay? Back to exhibit uh, defense exhibit 7. So we're looking at P and Q, and there's a wall in between there. Uh, is there plumbing in this in this wall separating P and Q? No, sir. Okay. Uh, this is a solid wall, right? Yes, sir. All right. And there are no vents on this wall between P and Q, is that correct? No, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I want to show you uh, State's Exhibit 43 that's already been admitted into evidence that you've talked about earlier. Um, and this is uh, the, the cell, uh, inmate cell change history screen, um, and you see uh, relating to Oni Isaac uh, Kirk, a.k.a. Oni Isaac Scott. You see that? Yes, sir. All right. Now, Lieutenant, in this exhibit, we... I, Highlighting the also known as um, this does not this exhibit this printout will not show all the different aliases that Oni Isaac Kirk has every time he's been arrested or come into jail as far as whatever records the jail has because you would have and I need to back up if you have a, uh, an inmate come in person come in from the streets and you you log them in, right? You, you check them in and you go through your paperwork, right? Yes, sir. And if there is information that they have other aliases, you document that too, right? What we normally do is we, uh, what we do is we uh, book them on the warrant. So whatever the name is on the warrant, that's what we're going to book them on. Uh, okay. Then we'll ask them what their mother's maiden name is and we'll put that down as an alias. That's what we do. And like if someone's a gang member, you would ask them, what's your gang name? What do you go by? What's your moniker? Would you ask them those type of questions? Back in 93, I'm not sure. We, okay. really, we didn't start the gang intelligence unit until 1994. Okay. Uh, but whatever names the person comes in as, you document whatever the warrant says, right? Yeah, we book them on the warrant that's presented to us, yes, sir. Okay. So, fair to say that this also known as this alias, there could be other aliases listed under Oni Isaac Kirk that, that wouldn't be reflected on this document printout. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And then I want to go through uh, every single one of these, these dates. So let's start with number one. January 8, 1993, uh, we see as one, 3 a.m., uh, fourth, uh, 428 cell, um, you see that, right? Yes, sir. Okay, but we see also that he was booked on July 26, 93. So how can he be in jail if he was booked on 726? Help me understand that. Um, back then in the old siege system, we actually had dummy terminals. We didn't have computers in the jail. This is before all that started. Um, the actual computers were kept in the basement at the city building, uh, the old city building that was brought down for the ballpark. Um, because of that, to rebook someone uh, with an added charge or to change something in their booking, if it had been more than, say, three weeks, maybe 30 days at the most, we had to rebook that whole person again. We had to go in there and rebook them again because we couldn't pull up the old and add to it. We have that capability now, but back then we didn't. So uh, this is, he was originally brought in in January. 
and for whatever reason he was rebooked in July for something else. Okay, so uh, in other words, in, in this printout, this specific printout, States Exhibit 43, shows 10:14 a.m. 1-5-2012 on the top right. You see that? Yes. That would reflect uh, when this screen was printed, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and and just so I'm, I'm, I'm clear on what you're saying, it is if someone's in jail and then there's a a a charge or that that. Uh, that had that the inmate hasn't specifically been charged with, uh, or hasn't been a warrant hasn't been executed. Uh, they can basically execute a warrant. I say they, the police can execute a warrant while the person's in jail, right? Yes. So this could reflect, even though he was in jail January first of '93, he could have been, he was in there the whole time, and he was also booked while in jail for another charge that that the police found out that he had done while he was outside on 726. He was either rebooked uh, or a warrant came up. I'm not quite sure. I couldn't tell you without the... Okay. But yeah, he, it looks like he was rebooked in July. Okay. So that that clarifies that discrepancy, fair? Yes. And then so we see about from January 8th, almost a month, February, he's moved to the sixth floor. Is that is that accurate? Yes, sir. And he's moved to the sixth floor at 10, 17 a.m. Did I read that right? Yes. And that's and that's an accurate reflection of, of that move. In other words, by 10, 17 a.m. approximately, we know that Oni Kirk is on 607. Fair? fair? No. Okay. That's when it was entered into the computer. It may have taken an hour or two, depending on what was going on on the floor, to either get him moved or getting moved into the cell. That's just what time it was put in the computer. Doesn't say exactly what time he was moved uh, because of the activity. He could it could have been put in the computer at 10:07. It may have been several hours later before he was actually moved. Well, in other words, we we know for certain that at least at at it was entered at 10:17. Oni Kirk was on the sixth floor, right? No. So. Is it, he, he could have been. He could have been on the, the fourth floor. He could have been on the fourth floor in the holding cell waiting to be transferred. Uh, he could have been held uh, in one of the other holding cells, depending on how many inmates we had out pending to be transferred. And then when they, uh, the officer working classification down on the second floor would enter to that, he entered it at six uh, or at uh, ten seventeen a.m. And he's got to call the floor, tell them, hey, we need this guy moved. But depending on what we're doing at the time, it may take a few hours of getting moved actually to the new housing area. Okay, so so these so this record doesn't you can't uh, you can't tell this jury uh, exactly what time he's at a certain cell based on this record. Is that fair? No, it's going to be representative within a few hours, but it won't be exactly that time. Okay. So he okay. could have been on another floor. He could have been there's several different places he could have been. So the move, the 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 time only talks about when it was entered in the computer, but it would not be entered in the computer. It would only be entered in the computer before the move, not after the move. It, it, once again, it all depends. Okay, it can be before or after. Yes. All right. So then we go down to number two. Two days later, we know for certain Oni Kirk is moved. Uh, he's moved, but he's it, it, is he moved from two to three? Can you? Uh, Usually, when you have multiple moves uh, in one day like that, that means they never hit one of those cells. They tried to move them, and there was an issue with it. For some reason, you couldn't go inside that cell. So when you have multiple moves like that on one day. It usually means that we try to put him somewhere and all of a sudden we couldn't, you know, it was a classification issue or he had issues or people in there had issues with him so on and so forth. Okay. So maybe he wasn't in. So he may have been moved and spent a little time in there. He may not have. Because so, there's another area there too where it shows like three or four moves in one day. Well, this is definitely right because between three and four, 
you see uh, a sixth floor to a second floor move on the same day, right? Yes. Um, okay. Because the issue we had is once again, we had over 1,800 inmates. So sometimes we try to move people and we have people sleeping on the floor. We have people sleeping in the common areas. We have people sleeping everywhere. So we try to move someone and sometimes we couldn't because there was just no room in that cell. So we didn't move them somewhere else. Okay. Lieutenant, the fact that Oni Kirk is moved so many times in, th in this record, in this, in this exhibit, 43, we know he was moved 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 times, right? Yes, sir. Before he went to prison, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Looking in your training and your experience, looking at this exhibit, only Kirk... Can you deduce that Oni Kirk was a troublemaker? Uh, not necessarily. We had a lot of people bounce crawl back then because we were looking for space. Okay. Well, Daniel Viegas on Exhibit 42, State's Exhibit 42, he wasn't bounced around, right? Yes, sir. Because he was a juvenile. There's only certain places we could put them, yes. Right. And you mentioned earlier that you said the, the rules, I, I use the word rule, but you, you had cited a specific uh, authority or specific department that requires certain procedures regarding juveniles in adult jail facilities. Can you, can you articulate that again, please? The Texas Commission on Jail Standards. All right. And, and what is the Texas Commission of Jail Standards to you? Are they the, the, the essentially the, the law, the rule-making body for, uh, for the they, state they're jail? A, they're the state entity, and they're, uh, they're in charge of the regulations for all uh, jails within the state of Texas, all county jails in the state of Texas. Okay, right. Um, and regulations must be followed. Would you, would you agree with that, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Okay, when regulations are not followed, then there's a problem, right? We'll, we would be out of compliance, as we were in 93. You were out of compliance in 93? We didn't get into compliance until 97 because okay, so, of the problems we had with housing. Okay, so explain that since you just brought that up. What, you're not in compliance. Um, well, first, my first question is, what are the sanctions for not being in compliance? At the time, we were not in compliance because we had 1,800 inmates in a jail that was supposed to only hold just over 1,000. Uh, but since we did have a plan that was with the county commissioners, unfortunately, it took several years, over a decade, for the annex to be built. Um, they let us, uh, they held us not in compliance, but there were no repercussions because they knew we were trying to work to expand our bed capability. Okay. Now I want to address the specific regulations regarding juveniles, okay? Now, do you, would it be fair to say that juveniles per regulation are to be separated by sight and sound from adult inmates? Yeah, they cannot be housed together, that's correct. Um, okay, by sight and by sound, that is the regulation, correct? Yes, they cannot be housed but within sight and sound. Okay, now earlier you talked about um, Sun Porch and you mentioned that it was possible for juveniles to be on some porch with adults, right? Yes, sir. And it's clear from the sun porch uh, pictures that juveniles are not kept away by sight and sound from adults because you have, based on just looking at exhibit 50, right? Yes, sir. So, is this an example of non-compliance? No, sir, because they're under direct supervision. Same thing with females. Female inmates have to be kept out of sight and sound of male inmates unless they're under direct supervision. These inmates would have been under direct supervision, so it doesn't uh, violate the rule. Okay. So, 
if there's direct supervision, Lieutenant, it would not be possible, at least highly unlikely, for juveniles and adults to have communication on Sun Porch. No, Fair? No, no, we just, when we were up there watching them, they're under direct supervision, but they can talk and stuff like that. We wouldn't prevent that from happening. You we, wouldn't prevent adults talking from juveniles no, despite sir. direct supervision? No, okay. Sir. Why, if that is regulation? Because they're under direct supervision. The re regulation is for housing. Okay. Lieutenant, uh, there are daily records of the 72-hour holdover cells there are daily records kept in the 72 holdover cells where inmates go to some porch. True or not true? Yes. True, right? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Before, when you were testifying, the state had asked you if you had reviewed records of Oney Kirk, if you were familiar with records of Oney Kirk. Um, you had an opportunity to review those records before your testimony walking in here today, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, even before this week, you had at least more than a week to look at whatever records the state gave you regarding Oni Kirk. Fair? Yes, sir. All right. Um, now, Lieutenant, did you take it upon yourself to review all records of that specific inmate or only the records that the state provided to you? I pulled up those records originally um, a while back and I went off of what uh, I looked at the housing records. That's all that's going to be available to us. Uh, all the other printed records that are, that were destroyed. We were not going to have anything. We only hold those for two years. And when you say records that were destroyed, are you talking about the daily records kept from the holdover cells from the inmates that went to some porch? Non-computerized, yes. All the handwritten records. All the handwritten records would have been destroyed. Okay. We wouldn't have kept those. Okay. So, fair to say then, Lieutenant, that if we try to look back now to see all the records that were available of when um, inmates went to some porch, uh, it would be impossible for us to review that. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Okay. I think the retention period is two years at most. All right, fair enough. May I have a moment, please? Yes,
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark defendant exhibit number nine. Those are you able to say that those records are true and accurate? These are old sieges printouts, the old printouts from the sieges system back at that time. This is where we go downtown to pick up. Okay. Yeah. And so you feel comfortable testifying? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. No, no objection. Okay. Thank you. That's correct. Yes, I am offering him to it's, have it's admitted. Thank you, Judge. Uh, okay, Lieutenant, I'm going to show you uh, it's Defendant's Exhibit Number Nine, and. You, you identified these records, but can you tell us again what this is? We get a daily printout of uh, a roster by floor of where all the inmates were at. Daily printout of the roster on, on all the floors. Specifically, this exhibit reflects the second floor, right? We would get it, and then we would handwrite update it. So, so walk me through this, Lieutenant. Um, how does how does a, a, a detention officer obtain this record? Where do they get it from? What do they do with it? Uh, and and how is it disposed? Uh, in the morning, uh, someone will go out pick up cases of rosters uh, from the city building, bring them back. Our classification officer would then take them up to the floors. We make handwritten changes because they're often inaccurate. Handwritten changes to the rosters uh, to make them reflect who we had and where they were at. Uh, after that was done, as we moved people around and stuff, we would write on them, move people around until the next day's rosters came out. There's one for every floor. Okay. Now, you said that, that, that they, it can be inaccurate. Yes. What, what would be inaccurate as an example? Well, like before, when you were showing me Oni Kirk, uh, let's say Oni uh, Kirk was uh, a house to 640. I'm just pulling numbers out. 640. Sure. But we had him housed on the fifth floor in the holding cell until he could get moved somewhere else. Then we would scratch out, and on the fifth floor, we'd put him in the holding cell. That wouldn't reflect on the roster we had printed, but so the officers can keep track of who they're on the floor, we'd go with the written notes. Okay. That kind of thing. Well, I'm going to use as an example States Exhibit 42, and I'm highlighting that this is an inmate cell change history screen. You see that? Yes, sir. Um, now, this record would be different than uh, Defendant's Exhibit 9, which is the daily record. Fair? Those are different records, yes? They both come out of the computer. Yeah, they both come out of the computer, I get that. But it's, it's a different record, right? One shows where they were put and when they were put there. The other one shows uh, that day where they were assigned at. That day where they were assigned, right? And so the inconsistencies or the inaccuracies like you mentioned about Oni Kirk because he was moved so much either because he's a troublemaker or for whatever reason. I'm going to object to the sidebar argument. For whatever reason, the inaccuracy is relating to the time here on the inmate cell change history those inaccuracies would be different than the inaccuracies in on the daily floor plan. Fair? Not quite sure what you're asking. Okay. Well, for example, on the daily floor plan, we're looking at defense exhibit number nine. This would be a floor plan, and I don't know if you can tell on this page. This is for cell block. This is for cell block L. Cell block L. Yes. 
and I'm going to zoom in on the day. And what do you think that day is? Nine, uh, September 1693? It could be. Okay. And that's page three, what we see, right? Yes. <clears throat> if we look at page two, Sorry to be moving so much. Does that look like a, a better uh, date for you to yeah. read, Lieutenant? It looks like 9-16-93, yes, sir. All right, and that's page one on there, right? Yes, it looks like page one. Page one, okay. So, I'm going to zoom back out. So looking at this page, page one, Defendant's Exhibit 9, you see cell block K? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And cell block K has a list of inmates. Fair? Yes. And there's there's numbers next to each inmate in cell block K. 252, 252, 253, 253, 254, 254. Right? Yes. Okay. And so looking at this record, so just so the Court reporters clear that there are, there's a Jose Ruben Hernandez. He's got a cell block 252. There's a Mario Alberto Gardera, and it also has 252, right? Yes. Now, and both of them on September 16th were in cell block K, right? Yes. Okay. Now, does the fact that there's two of the same numbers in cell block K? with two different individuals. My question is, does that indicate to you that these two individuals were in the same housing cell on the cell block? No. Okay. It just means that these, they, they, let, me, they, let me finish okay. the question. It just means based on this record that we know for certain that all these people on page one were in cell block K, right? No. no. Once okay. again, they could have been moved and we would have had to hand write that in. Okay. So, you're not representing that this record is inaccurate, correct? You're saying it's possible, but you don't know. Fair? Fair. Okay. So, as far as you know, this record shows cell block K has all these people in there. Fair? Near somewhere, because we were overcrowded, so that's why you see the, the two 252s, because technically we had two people assigned to the same bunk. Right. But that doesn't mean they were living in the same area. They were in there somewhere. Sure. Okay. <coughs> and, in the, and by the way, the 250 or whatever, if I remember correctly, Lieutenant, that's what, when I'm ready to ask you a question, I will promise you, I will tell you. Until then, please let me ask a question before you answer. Is that fair? I apologize, sir. It won't happen again. No, not a problem. You don't have to apologize. Just want to make sure we're on the same page. We are now. Yes, sir. So at the bottom of this uh, first page, you see cell block L? Yes, sir. And then you see uh, count two? Can you see capacity four? Yes, sir. Okay. And like you said, despite capacity four, you can have two to eight or however many people you need. But we know on this record, we have cell block L down here. You can identify that letter, right? Yes. All right. Next page. Do you see cell block L again? Yes, sir. And fair that this is still September 1693? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, we have two uh, we have two people here, right? Yes, sir. All right. <coughs> On 
on this on this page you see cell block M. You see that, sir? Yes, sir. And the date is still September 1693, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And then here you see Oni Kirk, right? Yes, sir. And uh, he, we know, based on this record, is on cell block M on September 1693. Fair? That's where it's assigned, yes, sir. And looking at Defense Exhibit 7, M would be where I'm indicating on the screen. Fair? Yeah, yes, sir. Showing you another page of Defendant's Exhibit uh, 9, you see cell block P, cell block Q, correct? Yes. And then you see Daniel Villegas and cell block Q, correct? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, and so, Lieutenant, looking at all these records, that we just talked about. Going back to the map of Defendant's Exhibit 7. September 16, 1993, Oni Kirk is in house in cell block M and Daniel Villegas is in cell block Q, right? Yes, sir. And on And on States Exhibit 43, on September 14, 1993, Oni Kirk is in the second floor, somewhere around the 2.40 hour, right? The, and the, at 2.40 p.m. <coughs> Right. It was under the computer at 2.40 p.m. Okay. It was under the computer at 2.40 p.m. And, and Oni Kirk, and if you need to look at this exhibit, then that's it. I have, um, I have no other questions, Ron. Best wins. Lieutenant Nansen, I'm showing you States Exhibit 43 and 42. How certain are you from September 14th, 1993 till Mr. Villegas was released on September 20th, 1993 that Mr. Oni Kirk and Mr. Villegas were on the second floor. How certain are you of that? They were on the second floor. Together? Yes. For those days? At the same time. And all inmates, adults and juveniles go to rec at the same time? Yes. How often is rec? At least twice a week. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Spencer. I'm going to mark uh, the defendant's exhibit number 10. That is a three-page document that I'm going to show to the state.
my last question, Lieutenant. Uh, on defense exhibit number nine, you are certain, sir, that You are certain, sir, that on September 16th, 1993, Daniel Villegas was housed in cell block Q and Oni Kirk was housed in cell block M, right? Yes, sir. And that would put cell block M is where I'm pointing, correct? Yes, sir. That would put one, two, three walls between Daniel Villegas and Oni Kirk on September 16, 1993? Yes, sir. Pass the witness. I'm sorry, Judge. Mm -hmm. uh, David, you said that, uh, that inmates would go to some porch twice a week? Twice a week. Uh, do you know what days? It, depending on when they had time to take them up there. It was an hour and a half twice a week, three hours a week. Thank you. Pass the witness. Mr. Walter, let me direct it. But, Lieutenant, thank you very much. You're still under the court subpoena, but we know where we can find you. Yes, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Have a good day. <coughs> I always love jurors who want to continue to work, uh, but in talking to the lawyers, the next several witnesses that may be called will take some time. So instead of working over what you wanted to, we'll stop. Uh, we're on good pace, just so you know. We're on good pace. So I'm sending you home again. I'm sending you somewhere under the following instructions. You're not to discuss this case with anyone. You're not to remain within the hearing of anybody discussing this case. You're not to discuss this case among yourselves. You're not to read any newspaper articles, listen to any radio broadcast, or view any television programs which may discuss this case. Three instructions this time. Have a good meal. Probably choose a different one from yesterday. Uh, and rest, because uh, we're going to continue with this case tomorrow. Uh, I do need you, unless there's an accident again, in, our, uh, in your jury room by 8.30, at which time we will continue with the trial of this case. Follow the feed into your jury. All